Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed for another episode of Unboxing Boxes. Okay, well, I'm going to start with this box here because it was sent in by a Patreon member and our patrons always send us fun and exciting stuff. So I'll tuck into this first and we'll go from there. Uh, before I do though, I just realized I need my knife. One moment, please. Okay. All right. I should also note for those of you who are relatively new to the channel, who have subscribed in the last few weeks, we do do this unboxing boxes segment once a month usually, uh, and it's just a fun, somewhat pointless little series. We do it actually goes for quite some time, usually 20 to 40 minutes. Uh, and I just show you guys what I have incoming or what has arrived recently or over the past few weeks that we'll be getting to. Some of the stuff you're about to see will provide in-depth reviews on. Some of it we'll use for other reviews or builds and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just to give you guys some insight uh, as to what we're working on and the hardware we have as it sort of comes in. And of course, we also get some stuff like this from our Patreon members, which, well, I don't know. Let's see what we've got here first. It's seriously heavy. I'm not sure if I should even do this, but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Oh no, it looks like we have some snacks. Oh boy, do we have some snacks. Looks like we have a lot of Asian snacks. This must be the doings of our Patreon member ZZR Hardy, I think. Okay. So, we have a, a big assortment of snacks there for uh, the unboxing process. And it looks like we have a box attached to a, a box. So it's not just one uh, big box, it's a pair of boxes. Okay, this was the heavy part, so possibly some liquids in here. We may have a, another series of drinks on our hands. That we do. Okay, I'm not going to tip this out because it's going to make a huge, huge mess. I think what I'm going to do is, because this episode's already going to be ridiculously long with all the hardware I have to look at, I couldn't actually fit all of it on the table. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe try one or two of these. And then I'm going to take it all to Tim's place uh, tomorrow morning because we're doing a lot. We're doing the Patreon live stream tomorrow. We've got the Q and A's, and then we're heading to PAX for two, two to three days. So I'll, uh, I'll just sample one or two of these. Oh, we've got the grass jelly drink. I had that last time. I actually want to give that to Tim. So I'll, uh, I'll put that back in. We've got a lot of interesting looking things. So I'm, yeah. Sorry for those of you who are interest to see my reaction to all of this, but we'll probably do it on the live stream, I think, uh, tomorrow. So anyway, like I said, I will try one or two things. I might try some of them, and I might try the Green Sands Original Lime and Apple Drink, and I'll put the rest away. So we'll try that another time. We've just got too much hardware to look at. But thank you, ZZR Hardy, for sending more snacks and drinks. There's some seriously interesting stuff here. We'll get to the drinks and food in a moment. I think we should start with our first hardware box. So I'll just grab anything and we'll see what we got. I'm not a hundred percent sure if these two are meant to go together. This one is clearly from EK and I think I've ripped all the shipping labels off this one, but I think this was also from EK. So we'll start with this and we'll see what we got. Ah, yes, there is EK gear in here. So inside we have a CPU block, the new EK Velocity RGB Nickel Plexi block. Looks pretty good. If you guys recall, I recently got a whole lot of EK gear, which made this beast. So if you missed that series and you're interested, you can go watch that. Uh, we have the EK Vector RTX 2080 RGB Nickel block. So it's a, I think it's a blacked out block. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. And, ah, we have I think it's an acrylic version or plexi same sort of deal oh this is a 2080 ti rgb block and that's what 
all the screws are coming from, all the screw noises. And so if they've sent those, what else have we got here from EK? They've sent plenty of goodies by the looks of it. Ooh, an AMD block. Uh, this is another RGB velocity block. What socket is that for? It looks like it's, oh, it'd be AM4. The AM4 based on what it looks like on the front there. Plus it's probably not big enough box to be a TR4 block. Ah, awesome. So to test, oh, some back plates. That was, was, wasn't what I was going to say. And another back plate. Uh, <laughs> I'll get it out in a minute. What I want is this. So. Uh, I'm already running out of space to put all the boxes. Okay, so we have their slim 360 millimeter uh, kit. So it's basically a starter kit. As it says, starter liquid cooling kit. So you get a 360 millimeter radiator with three 120 millimeter fans. You get a little pump reservoir combo. You get a block and then the tubing. If you want to get into water cooling, sort of your custom do it yourself, open loop stuff, these are where I'd recommend just start because you get an idea of how it all works, the bits that you need. We've recommended these in the Q&As before to people asking where they should start. These are really cool. So I'm keen to get this kit, but they provided this kit so I have an easy way to test these RTX blocks because I want to do that. I want to see how they perform, what they allow us to do. I'm not expecting miracles, but you know, nice, quiet, cool temperatures. And testing it in this system would be a complete, not a nightmare, not something I want to do. So thank you very much to EK for sending all this gear over. I'll actually, we don't have a huge, well, we have as much time as we want, but I don't know how long you guys are going to want to watch an episode for. And this one's going to be probably a 40 minute episode, I would think. We'll have a look at one of the blocks anyway. I might throw up B-roll for uh, the others. So yeah, as you can see, it looks very nice. Love the plexi over the nickel plated block. You get to see all the fluid if you have some fancy fluids or even just the standard stuff looks pretty good and what would it be that way uh yeah that's right so if it's sitting that way in your system you see the geforce rtx up the right way so that's pretty cool of course in an inverted case it would be the other way around we've got a little bit on the end here rtx 2080 ti so you can show off that it is a 2080 ti card that you've got but anyway very nice looking block keen to give it a go you will see this on the channel soon i'll test out how well it works so big thank you to EK for sending all this gear over. Hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll be able to show it off to you in a content piece dedicated to cooling and messing around with the RTX series graphics cards. And yeah, I'd also like to check out these blocks as well. I'll probably put this one to use pretty quickly. All right. Well, since I have it on the table already, we'll start with, I've got another one of these here. I think there's a third one. I'll go look for the third one. Okay, three small boxes. This one's heavier than the other two, so probably something different. Pretty sure they're all from Corsair. I think one of them has memory, so I can fully populate this rig with eight modules instead of four. Just four modules, come on, what was I thinking? Anyway, <laughs> let's see what they got for us. Might have to just cut the cardboard on this one, I can't get into it. Beautiful, so we have some more DDR4 3000, yep, 3000, four eight gigabyte sticks, 32 gigabyte kit, and is the Vengeance Pro stuff in black, which is already what we've got in there. So we've got four sticks, now we'll have eight. Um, you may argue that it's not entirely necessary, but whatever, you know, we can. Corsair was happy to provide it, I'm happy to put it in there, and it'll look a bit nicer, so there's that. Yeah, thank you to Corsair for sending that over for our set piece rig. Okay, these two, I think we've got their new SSD. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I think that's what they're setting anyway. I have no idea what else it could be. It's too light to be memory. Unless it's uh, some old fashioned naked sticks with no heat spreaders, but who does that? I'm gonna have to cut the top of this as well. All that for that. I'll just check that we've got the same deal in here. Already got quite a mess to clean up. 
Okay, yep, MP510, so that's the new Corsair M.2, and it is a proper M.2, so they had the MP500 before this, I believe, I'm pretty sure I reviewed it, it was quite some time ago now, uh, but these apparently are better value, uh, better endurance, I think it's quite competitive endurance actually with the competition, and I believe, looking at the box here, that would definitely be right, it has extremely impressive sequential read and write performance. So these things should be blazing fast. Uh, what do we got here? Two 960 gigabyte models, and I think they sell for about 270 uh, US from memory. I looked them up earlier, uh, when, well, a few days ago when they said they were sending them. And I don't know if they're in Australia yet, so I don't have that information. Uh, if I find out, I'll put it in a comment below or in the description. But yeah, really nice, fast M.2 drives. I won't talk about them for too long because I will be testing these and featuring them in builds on the channel. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's too much more I need to say. They've got a five year warranty and pricing and performance seems great. So yeah, keen to give them a proper whirl for an actual real review later on. I'll grab this next one because I also put this on the table a moment ago. Uh, uh, this is actually a complete mystery to me, this one. It's a very beaten up, creased box. I think it's been sitting uh, around for a while now. Let's open in amazement. What do we got? What do we have? Ah, it's the new wall mounting kit. Some stuff. It's the new uh, ASRock Desk Mini 310, I think it is. Uh, the mystery will be solved in a moment. Okay, the As ASRock Desk Mini series. And you know what? It, oh, yes, it does. I stand corrected. There is the Desk Mini 310 uh, version. So this has the H310 chipset on it, and it is a budget version of the Desk Mini. Having said that, I have no idea how much it sells for. So I'm not actually sure when it will uh, go on sale. What is that? Hey, bet you no one under the age of 20 knows what that is. Uh, we got power cords, SATA cable, uh, power adapter. What have we got here? It is a uh, 19 volts, six amps. So pretty beefy. I think this is limited to 65 watt processors, which is what we saw with one of the uh, earlier models. You can remove the limits, but then it's going to be bloody loud. So I will be providing a review on this in the not too distant future. I definitely want to review this little guy. But yeah, as you can see, tiny, tiny little PC. Got display port, HDMI, USBs, VGA, power input on the back, Type-C and Type, uh, yes, yeah, so Type-C, USB and 3.1 presumably on the front, uh, two audio jacks, you could also top mount some stuff, uh, though that isn't done here. Uh, I probably should open this up to give you a quick look at what lurks inside. Okay, four screws are removed, it just slides out, there's a little uh, like front I.O. connector there, and that's what you're looking at. So we have a naked chip here, which is the chipset, the H310 chip. Pair of uh, laptop style SODIMM uh, modules, you can put up to 32 gigabytes, so two 16 gigabyte sticks, and that will work on this platform. Obviously the CPU socket, you can put any uh, 65 watt, as I said earlier, 8th gen CPU, they're not advertising the 9th gen yet, but it should support the 9th gen CPUs. Not that I would recommend putting one of the 8 core CPUs on this board. Um, yeah, that would be heavily throttled. It wouldn't blow the board up or go poorly or anything. Well, it'd go poorly in the sense that the uh, CPU cooler would be whizzing its little brain off. It'd be heavily throttled and performance wouldn't be nearly as good as expected, but it would work. So there is that. Uh, we've got an M.2 Wi-Fi. Uh, slot that is not populated, an M.2 an slot that's not populated, but we do have a little package here that says M.2 Wi-Fi kits. Now these won't be provided, this is sold as a bare bone, so it'll be a hundred and something dollars probably, uh, don't expect it to be too much more than that, uh, but there is a kit here for 
the Wi-Fi. So you get adapt, you get the module, the antenna, all that sort of stuff. And we also get a kit to mount it to the back of a monitor or something like that, or the wall or whatever you want to do. But that's that really. So anyway, I'll test it out with a few different CPUs, see how it performs, see what thermals are like. You have to use the box, well, mostly you would be using the box cooler, the one that comes with the locked CPUs. You wouldn't be using an unlocked CPU on this. So anyway, that's probably enough about that. Okay, a couple down, let's get another one. ASRock motherboard, I can see ASRock in the top corner. Oh, it's one of their new Phantom Gaming boards. Oh, where am I going to put this? Uh, okay, the new Phantom Gaming 9 Z390 motherboard. The big reveal. Uh, we'll quickly take it out and see what it's all about. So this board is currently selling for $270 US. And as far as I can tell, it's not available in Australia just yet, so I obviously can't give Australian pricing. It's quite a nice looking board. We won't go through all the accessories and everything. We're just doing a, a quick and dirty unboxing. Uh, yes, now the reason I wanted to take this out was to see what the VRM configuration was all about, because it looks like it's quite beefy, but I wasn't sure if that was just a, a fake deal or not, but it actually has doublers on the back. It has six doublers, so it will be a 12-phase V-Core VRM. Uh, I haven't fully pulled it apart yet, but I believe this is the IR35201 uh, controller in a, well, it's using six phases from the controller for the V-Core, two for the iGPU, and then those six phases are doubled using the IR3598 doublers. So you end up with 12 power stages. They are 40 amp power stages. Uh, I think the part number is CSD87350. So power delivery on this particular board certainly shouldn't be a problem. It has the new uh, 2.5 gigabits per second LAN. So I will be testing that out and seeing how well that works. Uh, presumably it's a little over two times better than what we're used to with gigabit ethernet. Uh, and then everything else is fairly standard. We've got three M.2 ports, three PCIe times 16 slots, uh, not all of which are wired for eight times bandwidth, which is not surprising on this platform. Primary slots times 16, second slot looks like times eight, and the third slot looks like times four bandwidth. That is how they're wired. Eight SATA ports. But anyway, that is my quick and dirty unboxing of this board. Uh, yeah, looks pretty good. We'll know more about it very soon because I'm going to be testing a hell of a lot of these motherboards to see how they perform in terms of VRM uh, thermals and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. Okay, it's probably about time I had uh, Green Sands Original Lime and Apple drink. So I don't really like lime. I don't mind, in small doses, I don't mind lemon and lime. Apple I quite like, so we'll see what this does for me. Mm, actually smells really nice. Yeah, I mean, it's not what I was expecting. It's actually very tame, but yeah, I quite, quite like that. That's good. Thank you for that one. Uber cake. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that one correctly. All right, let's just see what this is all about. That's what we we're looking at. It's kind of, I'll take the rest to share with Tim. Hold on and put them down there in a safe zone. <laughs> Smells pretty good. Like the drink, it's also very tame. Um, yeah, it just tastes like a really bland cake. It's got a little bit of flavor. It's not, it's, I mean, I'm making it sound pretty bad, but it's fine. Actually, the taste comes on more after. I can taste it a lot more now. It's quite nice. Or at least it has for me anyway. Cool. Well, <sighs> yeah, sorry I didn't do more of that to uh, the Patreon member who sent that stuff in, but you'll get your money's worth tomorrow, I promise. It'll be a lot more entertaining with Tim on board. All right, let's keep moving here because we've been going for a while and I'm nowhere near halfway, I don't think. Uh, 
Arr. Ah. Oops. Oops, 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 oops. I totally forgot these were being sent and had been sent and had arrived. Okay, so firstly, I should just apologize to, well, Gigabyte and my Gigabyte contact because these boards did technically make it in time for the day one coverage and I didn't take them out and have a look at them because I'm an idiot and I completely forgot that they'd sent them. And they just ended up in my huge pile of boxes to be unboxed. So yeah, sorry Gigabyte, I didn't include these. I will make it up to you with some coverage. And from what I can tell, these are both very good quality motherboards, so they should fare well. Much better than Gigabyte has been faring in my VRM thermal testing. So yeah, I'm expecting pretty big things from these boards. So I don't have any pricing information on hand for either board because I totally forgot I had them. Uh, but I'll quickly take them out. Uh, I am reasonably familiar with what I believe is on these boards in terms of their VRM design. Okay, I'm not 100% sure which one of these boards is the higher end board. Uh, would have been good to do some research on these boards if I had a... I think... I'm, yeah, the Master is definitely a more expensive board of the two. a uh, very heavy board this one so I can't see the back side of the board properly I know this board has doublers so this is a 12 core 12 core let me start again this is a 12 phase V core VRM it's a genuine 12 phase so it has a six phase controller uh, I think it's using the Pro, I think, is using the ISL69183 controller. I believe this is an IR controller on the Master. Again, six phases. This one, I'm honestly not sure how it's configured. Probably doubled, but don't quote me on that. I will confirm when I do all the proper tearing down of the board and having a good look at what's on them. But this does have a pair of eight pin power inputs, whereas this has an eight plus four. But anyway, they're both really good looking motherboards. This one has the master. Let's so put that one down safely. So this one, it looks like they're making an effort to make finned heat sinks, at least from this side. You think, okay, that'll work better than just a block of aluminium. However, if you flip it around, we actually have a proper finned heat sink on the back. How well that's going to work uh, is anyone's guess. We'll have to test it. It's not exactly going to get a huge amount of airflow because first of all, it's under a bit of plastic and the air has to get through these slots here to go through all those. So, hmm. well, that is assuming that the airflow is coming from whatever you have on the CPU socket. Of course, if you have case fans blowing air into these, they should work a little bit better. Of course, the air still has to exit the fin stack. But anyway, that's all stuff we will test and work out down the track. Uh, but yeah, really solid looking board overall. It's got a gigantic back plate. If you need one of those, it has thermal pads that are removing heat from the back of the VRM area on the board. So that could help with VRM thermals. Anyway, enough about that. I will uh, do a lot of in-depth testing on these boards and hopefully you'll see on the channel uh, quite shortly. But yeah, uh, sorry to Gigabyte for forgetting about your really awesome looking boards here because these boards do look really high quality. Okay, next box. Let's, let's rip through this. This is one of those boxes that uh, is so well packed it's quite challenging to get into. Oh, I'm not actually sure what's in this, but whatever it is, it's well protected. Still no idea. This is what I'm looking at at the moment. What the hell is that? Oh, <laughs> that's what that is. That box went down with a serious thud, but okay, nothing's broken and it was just an empty box. It was just a heavy empty box. Okay, so we're not going to bother taking this one apart because it's just late to the party. 
uh, as I said in my, I think it was my day one. I think it was my day one coverage of the RTX 2070 that I was uh, going to be receiving a Founders Edition card late and I would take it out of the box, test uh, power, thermals, base performance or the performance that this produces, test all that kind of stuff and then I'm going to pass this on to Tim. So I'll do that tonight. Uh, hopefully I have time after I edit this video. <laughs> then I will take it to Tim tomorrow and he has some other tests and things lined up for this. So yeah, that's that. Uh, yeah, I won't bother opening it. You guys have already seen it at this point. It's a bit late to the party on that one. So that's what was in that box. Moving along. Actually, I might do that down here. Come on. You're too heavy not to cooperate. I think I know what this is. Those of you who are familiar with this brand will probably already have recognized the logo, but we have not featured this brand on the channel before. I've actually never ever seen one of their products before, so I just ripped the box. Bad start. We unboxed this box three times, so you got your money's worth out of that one. And we'll do this for the second time. Hopefully this one goes a bit more smoothly. There we go. Oop. Let's just fold that away. So for those of you sitting there in suspense going, what is it Steve? What have you got? What is it? Freaking out like that. Just chill. It is the Streecom. I hope I'm saying that right. Stree Streecom. Um, DA2. So it's a case. And it's a really, really, really cool case. Uh, it's a it's a very small case. Stuff's going everywhere. It's it's a very small case. Well, I mean you will have seen smaller cases, especially given that it is a mini ITX case. I mean it is still very small, but yeah, I've seen smaller mini ITX cases. This particular mini ITX case, apart from looking truly awesome, very slick, uh, supports some seriously nice hardware. So, you can see what I meant about slick. It is a full aluminium case, chassis. Externally, it is all aluminium. In fact, there's pretty much no plastic to speak of, apart from maybe the button, but even the surrounding. It's all aluminium, so you've got a type C on the front, and that is about it. So around the back here, we have the IO uh, area where you put in your IO shield and obviously all your motherboards IO stuff. Uh, piece of, uh, piece, a pair, <laughs> a pair of expansion slots for a full size, well, pretty long, that that 20, this will fit in there, I believe we'll be able to get that in there. Uh, but yeah, you can put a, a dual slot card in there. Then the power supply is obviously internal because we've got the three prong connector there. I think you can fit, I was going to say full size, which is actually technically correct. You can fit ATX form factor PSUs in here, but they can't be, I think, over 14 centimeters long. So specs real quickly, mini ITX motherboards, that's that's what it supports, so you can't go any bigger with micro ATX or anything like that. The maximum uh, CPU cooler height, assuming that you go for an air cooler, uh, would be 145 cent uh, millimeters, 145 millimeters. Uh, and then it supports a dual slot uh, graphics card up to 330 millimeters long, which to be honest, covers most of them. As for liquid cooling, if you're not using an air cooler, you can go a 120 or 280 or well from 120, uh, 240 or 280 millimeter radiators. So that's pretty amazing in a case that big. And then as I said earlier, the PSU support extends to ATX, but of course you can get the uh, SF, SFX uh, compact power supplies in there, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, nice compact case. I'm not gonna open it up and show you the inside. I will be testing this or I'll be doing a build with this on the channel soon. So yeah, I'm really excited to see how this performs. Oh, and just lastly, it comes in the black that you can see here or silver. Uh, it weighs 3.9 kilos empty, so about that, 3.9, almost 4 kilograms, and it has no RGB lighting to speak of, which they're very proud of, so it's a sleek, discreet 
but elegant looking case. So no, no fancy flashy RGB. Of course, you can put that sort of stuff in it if you want. Uh, that might upset them, but <laughs> you can do that if you want to. Okay, unless I've lost some boxes under all the boxes that I've unboxed, we've got two left. So we're doing pretty good here, uh, I think. Start with this little one here. See what's what we've got. I have a feeling I'm going to regret that. I mean, it'll be okay, but given what I think this product is, that was not wise. Not wise at all. Uh, yeah, that was actually pretty stupid. This is a 14 terabyte a Barracuda Pro hard drive. And for those of you at home watching, that's not the way to unbox a 14 terabyte hard drive. Uh, so yeah, be a bit more careful with them. But anyway, the shock resistance will survive that benchmark that I just did. Uh, but yeah, apart from the fact this is a 14 terabyte Barracuda Pro hard drive, I don't have too much more to tell you right now. I will be testing it out and featuring it in a few builds. Uh, but yeah, it's a mighty big hard drive. Great for backing up all our videos, which is what I will be actually using it for, is backing up all our archiving, all our older videos. Uh, for those of you wondering, it's 550 US for this particular model. No idea what it's worth in Australia because I don't believe it's landed here yet. The Iron Wolf Pro version, that's 900 Australian. So yeah, it's probably gonna be somewhere around that. Possibly not quite as expensive, but we'll see. We'll see. So that's that. Um, almost a failed unboxing of a really big expensive hard drive. Potentially last, I'll do a quick look around after I unbox this one because I have a feeling there's a few things laying about. Ah, another brand that we haven't featured on the channel before. I have looked at their products a very long time ago. This is Scythe. Scythe, I think it is. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. The Scythe Ninja 5. Uh, these guys were uh, well known in the, or they still are well known in the air cooling business. And they reached out and said, we want to send over some air coolers for you to check out. And here is one such cooler. Huh. It's a pretty cool screwdriver there. Mounting gear. Uh, to my knowledge, this works on every single current and most of the past platforms with the exception of Threadripper. So no TR2, uh, TR4 rather. TR2 is Threadripper 2. No TR4 uh, support. But it is, as you probably guessed from the box, a rather large air cooler. Sort of a squarish design. And you will fasten it to the socket or the mounting gear by going through this screwdriver, this custom made long screwdriver. So yeah, installation should be pretty easy. It's a very small base. When I say very small, it's perfectly fine for AM4, uh, your Coffee Lake CPUs and all that kind of stuff just won't work with Threadripper. Um, mostly because there's no mounting gear for it to work with Threadripper, but if it could mount to the socket, it wouldn't be ideal because it's not offering 100% coverage. Got a pair of 120 millimeter fans, like so. They've got some vibration pads in the corner. So you can mount them in a push-pull configuration on the heatsink. Uh, in terms of pricing, again, no idea what this is worth in Australia. Uh, if someone knows where it is or who, if anyone is selling it, any retailers are selling it in Australia, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll update the description. Uh, but it's about $60 US, which is fairly typical for a, a large air cooler, to be honest. And it looks like it has, what have we got? Two, four, six, is that 12? So it's six, I suppose you could say, dual heat pipes. Uh, there's be 12 going up amongst all the fins anyway. Three in each corner. It's quite weighty. I think it's about 1.2 kilos. Uh, memory compatibility should be okay, but that's something you've obviously got these cutouts along the sides here, which help you get above some taller memory sticks. So that improves compatibility. And as far as I'm aware, these two 120 millimeter fans are rated to spin quite slowly. I think up to 800 RPM, their spec sheet says. Um, so yeah, that's quite slow. Uh, yeah, it says 800 RPM on this little manual here, but it's a big heatsink, so you don't really need super loud fans. 
So anyway, that's that's that one. Is that is that everything already? Am I, am I done? I'm, I must be missing something. I think that's everything. I think I might have forgotten to bring a few boxes in here, but we can do another episode in a few weeks. So those of you who have been hounding me to another episode of Unboxing Boxes, you might get you might get one in the next few weeks. So you'll get two possibly in the same month. So we'll see how we go. But anyway, I have to really get moving on this one. I've got to quickly edit this video, get it up for you guys to watch. By the time you're watching this, I'll be at Tim's place. We would have already done a Patreon live stream. That's happening tomorrow, uh, which it will have, like I said, will have happened because I'm filming this in advance because I'm in a hurry. And then we're heading to PAX. So we're going to be covering the show, probably doing two videos at PAX. Uh, we're doing a Patreon meetup. So we're having some drinks with the Patreon members. That should be good. Uh, might take some of these along. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's pretty much everything for this episode. There'll be loads more benchmarks and in-depth testing and things happening on the channel. So don't worry about that. Massive Z390 VRM thermal comparison. And I also want to look at uh, something like power limits of boards, if the really low end boards do have power limits or not, because there's not really any concrete information on that at the moment. So I want to dig into that and see what's going on there. And of course, see how the 9900K performs on those lower end boards. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this extremely rushed episode of Unboxing Boxes. Had to power through everything, but I've given my reasons as to why that was. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.